Hey everyone, it's Keely for Soy and Shay and thank you for joining me. Dragon's Blood. It's either a fragrance you love or you hate. It's such a warm fragrance and I really like it in the winter time but not so much in the summer. I've had lots of requests to make it into a soap and I have been searching for a fragrance oil that is body safe. The um, Dragon's Blood from Aroma is not body safe but Dragon's Blood number four is safe for body use. So today I'm going to go and make Dragon's Blood number four into a loaf of soap and I bet you can already guess from the title of this video that it doesn't go as planned. Let's go and see. Before I start making this batch of soap, I do want to say a huge thank you to everyone who made comments on the mistletoe and ivy soap, where I explained that I'd had a go at doing a master batch of lye, and I hadn't quite put two and two together that an, the exothermic reaction was going to continue when I put more water into that concentrated solution. The videos I had watched online, including Soaping 101, showed that you put water into that concentrated um, lye mix and at no point did any of those videos and I went back and watched them again none of them mentioned that that lye water is going to heat back up everyone I watched that did make the master batch and was putting into their oils were using things like goat's milk and I kind of didn't put two and two together that it didn't matter what that extra liquid was that you were putting into your oils that you could put them into the oil instead of your mix so huge thank you to everyone who helped me out there as I have several soaps that I want to make over the next couple of days, I decided to give this whole master batch thing a go again. So in my little pot here, I have my lye solution, which is a 50-50 mix. So half lye and half water. And I have 142 grams of distilled water in this jug. So according to everybody, I should be able to pour it straight into my oil here. And I won't get that exothermic reaction I would get if I got poured it straight in here. Now obviously the soap is still going to heat up because that is a part of soap making um, but it should mean I can now pour this in here and we can get to soaping straight away. Okay so we've got that water now in here. I will then pour this concentrated lye solution into my bucket. I'm going to give it a mix up and then I'm going to split it out for my colours. Okay, so we've got this all split up for the colour. For my base, I am going to use some Harlequin Neon, which I have mixed up with some Lime Spider, and I'm going to pour that into my big one. Now, I have mixed this into a little bit of olive oil first. The reason being, from past experience, when I have used that Neon Green, it um, goes really lumpy, whereas if I mix it in with a little bit of oil first, then I know that it will um, disperse throughout my soap and not leave um, all those little clumpy bits in there. Now for the drop swell part, I have got in this little container some of the Really Red Mica, which again I've mixed with a little bit of the oil because I just don't want it to go um, clumpy on me. So pour all of the red in there and I'm just going to give these a little bit of a mix just to get the colours in and then we will add in that fragrance oil. Alright, so we're going to give that a really good stir there and then I'm going to pour in my fragrance oil and I'm just going to start with putting it into my green to see how it behaves. There are some groups out there which will tell you of their soaping experiences with fragrance oils. I have in the past found it quite difficult um, going off of these website or off of these pages because we all have such different ways of soaping we all have our own ingredients list we all have the amounts of water we use our additives I then find that the fragrance oils just behave differently you could add fragrance oil in at 3% and it will behave very differently to if you add it in at 5% so I gave up referring to those sites I can see for me this is thickening up so what I'm going to do is pour this into my loaf mold now and then we'll get that red in and hopefully I'll be able to get the pattern in here that I am wanting. Alright so while I've got that bit of green in there 
I have some red melt and pour which I have put just whoop, a wee bit of red liquid colorant so that it stays nice and see-through I'm kind of just putting some holes in here just to encourage it to swirl on through so for me yes this fragrance oil is going to accelerate so I don't think I'm going to be able to do I was going to do a mica drop swirl in here as well but I just don't think that's going to work somehow so what I'm going to now do is pour in a little bit of that in there give it a very quick stir and then pour straight in and I think we will need to make oops I was also going to pour in a little bit of black to get a secondary red colour through here. I'm having to work really, really quick now and really move on the fly here. So we'll give this a really good stir. I will end up also putting the hanger through here. I find that when your soap does thicken up like this and you were trying to get those swirls, putting a hanger through, you can actually get those nice swirls. And this has, ah, no, it's set up completely. So yeah, this pattern's not going to work, but you know what? It's still going to be soap. So let's get it in. Yeah, this is completely seized up. This is going to be fun. Maybe we just go for layers instead. <laughs> and I think that's exactly what we're going to have to do. So I don't think I'm even going to get a hanger through this lot. This is just soap in my pot now. <laughs> oh dear. So all of the planning I had for this, this soap has just gone well out the window. I wanted it to have a really nice swell through it. I wanted it to have um, a mica line in there. Oh, I can't even get it out the jug. It's seized up so much on me. I think I'm going to have to get my hands in here to push it down in the mould. Oh, dear. Oh, well, I'm just going to keep getting this into the pot and just hope for the absolute best. I can't even push it down with the spoon. This is ridiculous. How do you guys make this dragon's blood soap? Um, yeah, this is the worst a soap has ever set up on me. Um, I don't think this is going to work at all. All right, let me keep trying to work this one out and we'll come back in a minute. <laughs> right, so because this soap really couldn't be any more of a mess if I tried, I am going to try and get this to go through in if nothing more than just to put a couple of sort of lines through it. It is starting to get into its gel phase, which then means it is getting soft and it is hot. It is very, very hot. Just pop that over there for a moment. And you know what? Out of just pure desperation, I am just going to get my chopstick through here as well this is actually heated up in fact I can see steam coming off it I'm getting about 76 degrees Celsius coming out of this um, yeah I don't think I'll be soaping with this fragrance oil again if anyone's had success with this fragrance oil please let me know um, we'll or if you are in Australia and you know of a dragon's blood fragrance oil that is skin safe and doesn't behave in such a naughty way, please let me know. Right, so hopefully this green should also now be, it is, so it was solid before. You can now see underneath here it's going into its gel phase so that means it is going to be really really hot in there but I should now be able to at least get it into the mold so I know this isn't going to be <laughs> the prettiest soap that I have ever made and you know what it certainly won't be the only soap that I've ever 
had this happen to me on. In fact, my very first soap that I ever attempted to make did this to me. Um, my very first soap I made, I used a fragrance oil that I had seen in all the little soaping groups that said that it was really well behaved and it was called Love Spell and I actually got it from um, Aussie Candle Supplies and that was my first attempt at making a soap and it did this. It set up in my container. Um, it was my very first soap so you know I wasn't sure how things worked and stuff like that but um it ow, did put me off making more soaps for a little while the other thing i didn't like about it was that we put it out to cure we found somewhere that i could put it to actually cure out and the one thing i absolutely hated about this soap is that every time i walked into this room where or towards the room where it was kept it was actually in the dining room which was near the kitchen every time i walked into our kitchen I thought there were wet tea bags in the sink. That's just what it smelled like to me, was wet tea bags. So it, it kind of put me off making soap for a little bit. And it wasn't until about two or three months later I decided to have another go at making soap. And the next soap turned out to be a lot better. And, and it didn't set up like this. So I don't know why my very first soap actually did accelerate like that. There could have been any number of reasons. You know, it could have been that I was soaping at too high a temperature. It could have been that I didn't have enough water for that fragrance oil. It could have simply been that the Aussie Candle Supplies um, Love Spell reacts very differently to, um, say, Nurture's Garden Love Spell or so many other companies out there that do it. I have got some more of the Love Spell um, fragrance oil and I do actually want to give it another go. I know that this soap, oh my gosh, this soap is going to be full of air holes. I know that. Okay, so some of you are probably wondering why on earth is she still putting this video out here when that soap is quite obviously an absolute disaster? And it's just to show you guys that it doesn't matter how long you make soap for, you can still have disasters. And it's all about how you look at it as to whether it is a real disaster or not. And yes... <laughs> this one is turning out to be a very good disaster here. But you know what? Let's look at the bright side of things. This top is looking pretty awful compared to some of my other tops. I realise that. It's very lumpy. It's bumpy. But hey, this is dragon's blood. So it could quite easily be dragon scale. So it could be intentional for, for all anyone really knows. Well, we know it's not. But it could be. What I'm going to do, move all this out of the way, and I am going to go and give this a real good smack down. And that is to try and get rid of any air holes that I may, well, I don't may, I do have in there. So I'll be back in just one moment. Right, so I have given that a really good knockdown. I don't really have much confidence that it did very much. It is pretty much solid in there, and a lot of these little crumbly bits fell off the top. But just on the off chance that this still looks really pretty on the inside, I am going to ooh, spray the top of this with some extravagant mica. Hopefully this is starting to look like little dragon scales. And I have got some more of, oh, that was an awful lot of fluff. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but there's mica drifting all over the place. I have got some more of that clear melt and pour here, which I have got some of the liquid um, colorant in it just to try and keep it a little bit see-through. And I am just going to pour it over the top. Now, one, so it actually kind of looks a little bit like dragon's blood on the top, but two, because this is a little bit crumbly on the top, I'm hoping that this melt and pour will hold it in place for me. So unlike the last time I had a soap do this, I'm not going to let this deter me. It is obviously just the fragrance oil that is very naughty and misbehaving. I will have another go and I would love to have another go at a dragon's blood. Okay, so I am just feeling that that needs just a little 
bit more colour on the top um, just to try anything. What I'm going to use is some of the Caledonian Sparkle from My Micro Obsession and it's a greeny sort of colour. So I'm just spraying a little bit of that on the top as well just to give a little bit of contrast between that, that bright green. All right. Oh dear guys, I am so sorry. I've just pulled the camera down off the tripod to give you a closer look of Dragon's Blood and realised that during my knocking down of this soap, a piece of soap has thrown off the top and adhered itself to the lens. I am so sorry about that. So this is what my Dragon's Blood looks like. <laughs> I am going to leave it sit here, um, probably is only going to need about 12 hours of sitting here before I can actually come and cut it, otherwise it's going to be way too hard for my cutter. And we will see what glorious mess we have on the inside. Okay, so I am back to cut this dragon's blood and I have learnt a couple of things overnight. So after I made the soap, I decided that I was going to call it a day and I thought I'll go and sit and I'll start editing the video. So I had a good laugh because at one point I see where that soap stuck to the camera lens and I couldn't stop myself from laughing as it happened. But I sat there listening to me explain how I worked out how much lye solution I needed from my master batch and how much water I needed. And I played it again and then I played it again and I thought, you silly thing, you've actually calculated your water incorrectly. So I was meant to be soaping this at 35% water. And when I added in the 142 grams of water, I actually only then had a water percentage that equated to 21% of my oils and that is one of the reasons why this set up in the pot and um, kind of really didn't work for me. So I'll have to get some more of this Dragon's Blood number four in and give it another go. But for now I think what we'll do is we'll cut it open and see what we've got on the inside of this one. Alright, so I have decided I'm actually going to use my single bar cutter on this one. I did have to go to the markets today, so this has sat for about 24 hours now, which is a lot longer than what I wanted it to sit here for, because I knew that it was going to be really hard. And now that I've worked out, I only had a 21% water content in there. I know it's going to be super hard, and I don't want to wreck my multi-bar cutter, or at least I don't want to rewire it. So I'm going to use the single bar cutter and I think what we might do here is just chop off the end first of all and because that bit really does look a mess and we'll see what actually it's not too hard which I'm quite surprised about but I'm expecting there to be lots of air bubbles hopefully the top doesn't just fall off this soap if it does there is always that option of rebatching popping it, you know, grating it down, popping it into the stock pot and then melting it back down into another bar of soap. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not expecting the world out of it, which is really a shame because it is smelling really good with that sweet patchouli. I know it's not going to take too long before I can actually use a couple of these bars. But you know what? That's actually not too bad on the inside. So what I could actually probably end up doing is trimming down the sides of the soap and so to make it look a little bit more pretty. But, you know, it, it actually still is passable, I think. <laughs> so we'll see what it's like as we get further into the bar. That end piece could just be one that I keep for myself because the back of it's not too pretty. But that one cut edge, that's quite nice. And we'll just grab this piece. So actually it really isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be on the inside. It's definitely not how I wanted it to look. But now I know what my mistake was. I'll definitely give it another go. And I think I will actually soap at 38% water to make sure that I have got enough water in there. Just to at least try and slow down a little bit of that acceleration. Because I know it's still going to accelerate by the way by how quickly it did go but hopefully by using that 38% I might be able to get a little bit more of a swirl through it 
oh and this piece so th this is that side and if we flip it round that's the other side so honestly I'm actually quite pleased with how it's turned up this piece again I'll just trim off a little bit off the edge it looks like it's a scaly dragon on the top so you know what is really not that bad of a fail what do you guys think let me know down in the comments section down below I will definitely give this fragrance oil another go and try and do everything I wanted to do in it but I'm actually very very happy very very surprised at how this has come up so I think it will actually make it into my list of soaps so just will... looking at this bar up close I wanted to show you what putting that melt and pour in what I was trying to achieve you can see up in this little area here there's that really bright red spot and it's almost it looks liquidy and wet and it, that's the clear melt and pour and the whole idea was to try and add another dimension into the soap and actually try and make it look like it had little blood marks in and this is all that melt and pour in the top as well so it's a real shame it didn't work but I will try it again on the next soap but I hope you have enjoyed watching me make my dragon's blood soap and I hope you have laughed along with me at all my little errors and if you did why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below I will get back to you with any questions that you may have and if you haven't already why not subscribe to the channel I do bring out soaping videos every week or bath and body videos as well and if you hit the little bell sign it will let you know the next time I uh, bring those out for you and if you are new around here my soaps don't always turn out like this <laughs> they can be quite smoothly done and very pretty as well this is just a one-off and hey I feel I have to share the disasters as well well it's not really a disaster it is quite pretty in fact that's quite a pretty pattern that's formed in there so thank you so much for watching I hope you've had a good laugh with me until the next video have a great week bye